Did a little work on the V15. Uh, a couple things. Uh, where the dolly rides, there's a real soft spot in the hull. And the handrail's completely ripped out. So I'm going to mix the epoxy up over here. I strongly recommend these pumps. One pump of epoxy to one pump of hardener. Easy to measure out. You have to use a lot of pumps this time, probably 10 or 15 pumps. The uh, filler I'm going to use, I'm going to put in enough 406 to bring the epoxy and hardener compound up to about ketchup consistency. And then uh, after everything's on, I'm going to come back and make a little epoxy with 407, which is a super low density, uh, easy fairing fiber. And you can put that on uh, right after you fiberglass while it's still tacky, and that'll make uh, it super easy to sand smooth. Since it's totally set up and it's still pretty soft in these regions, uh, I'm gonna just do a fairing coat and a structural coat. Doesn't take any more time. I got three widths of fiberglass to put right along the uh, key line that I've marked with a marker, and that is so there's no sharp edges and it uh, tapers to the center of the boat. At the base of the mast here, I did uh, one layer of epoxy with uh, fiberglass tape. Uh, three pieces and now I've gone over that with uh, West System uh, epoxy with the 406 um, silica so that's a structural epoxy um, I'll sand that smooth Once the uh, oxy sets the off, sandy, just need to take off. Finished up with the 60 grit and belt sander that cuts very rapidly. Gotta be very careful, you gotta keep your belt sander moving, both to keep the surface cool so you don't uh, bind your sandpaper or uh, melt your epoxy, and keep it as flat as you can. Now I'm going to go across it with this pneumatic sander. I've got 80 grit on here, and I can take very long strokes with this and flatten the entire surface. This is a handy tool. They're not too expensive. You can pick one up at uh, Northern Tool, and then you can buy these long adhesive strips of 80 grit sandpaper that go on the bottom and pretty inexpensive way to sand. Very smooth and fair, a large surface on a boat like this. I finished up with the straight line pneumatic sander. If you don't have something like this, you can do this by hand, of course. Get yourself a long board, thin and long. This might be a, bit, a little too long, but you can hold a piece of sandpaper tape or hold a piece of sandpaper on this and use this by hand. You can even put yourself some handles here and make yourself a, a long sander. It's key to have it long so you're not making any new holes or new deviations when you're sanding off your fairing compound. A couple tips on making your sandpaper last as long as possible and cut as efficiently as possible. After you've cut it to size, run it along the edge of a table or a surface that breaks up some of the rigid bonds to the paper and makes the sandpaper last longer. Another thing you can do is add a little fairing disc compound. This is a very weak adhesive. Put that on the back and then onto your tool. And that keeps the sandpaper from moving on the tool. It'll get better cutting efficiency and the paper will last longer. 
finishing up sanding the 410 fairing compound off the side of the hull here. We got a lot of the 410 in it, so this sands very easily. It's just like air. Using the hand sander, you can feel high spots a little bit better than with the power sanders, so you know where to spend a little more time. But remember, always long strokes to finish up. So we're just about done with the fairing sanding here. The question is sometimes how low do you go? Well, you let your longboard decide. You're going long across long strokes. Some of the fairing should be left in the low spots, but you should fair down elsewhere till you just start to see the compound underneath show through. Along the edges, you shouldn't see any straight edge. Your edge should end up cloudy and smoothed right into the adjoining surface. So this is the portion of the hull where the strap of the dolly rode. And over the years, that flexing completely degraded the fiberglass. It's like paper here, I could push it. So I've got some glass on the exterior here and I'll fair that and finish it off, but I wanted to get a stringer on the inside of the hull to really add some stiffness there. So I've cut this stringer out of cedar and tapered the ends so that there won't be any stress points where it ends. I'm going to use the access ports we cut to get this stringer epoxied into the inside of the hull. But it's hard to keep it up against the hull while it dries, so I cut this notched piece. So I'll slide the bat in here with the epoxy already on it. And then I can use this notched piece to shove it up against the hull while it dries. Okay, we're about ready to put the batten in. So I got the batten cut with a notch for the cutout because it fits really close. And then uh, holes pre-drilled. We're gonna put the batten in and then use these screws through the original holes to draw the batten right up against the side of the boat and hold it in place while we glass it in. I have to take the decal off so I can paint. Good way to do that is with a decal eraser. This is, this is literally eraser material, just rubber material. Sits on the end of the drill. The previously painted parts of the hull are in good shape, so I just need uh, 150 grit sandpaper to rough them up and get them ready to paint. Getting ready to paint the hull. First I want to get it very clean, so I've gone over the whole thing with water and degreaser. Uh, now I'm going to go over it with this uh, aspirator for the compressor. Hull. The hull's going to have a blue stripe here, and this part of the deck that's blue will be repainted blue. Just have this roughly taped off. The blue will spray to here, and then when we paint the rest of the hull white, we'll get a very precise line to define the blue line. That's it, that's it, oh my goodness, oh, oh, three.